Welcome back to Al's Geek Lab. On last week's video, I got the old trusty XT behind me, running at 4.77 megahertz, all the way up to a 386, and then all the way up to being a 486. But was I happy with the performance? Nah. -uh. I decided to get myself one of these janky looking things. It's called the Blue Lightning 3. Basically, the hope is that if this works the way I expect it to, Murray, this will take me up to 80 miles an hour. Not 88, but just 80. Anyway, in between making the video for this thing, I hadn't quite got it there because I ran out of chips. So instead of getting all upset about it, instead of not making a video, something crazy happened. And this something crazy happened is very cool and is part of why I love making YouTube videos. Because we have a wonderful community of people that just get involved in the videos. Watch this, it involves Doom. And who doesn't love Doom? So what am I talking about here? Last week I showed, it right at the end of the video, I showed the promise of this uh, 486 high-end chip, the janky looking thing. And I said, look, it will probably make things run a lot faster than the chip that I've got in here, which is a 386 cam 486 Cyrix thing, uh, the 486 DLC or whatever it's called. Now, I also started up Doom because I thought, well, look, theoretically, I've got four megs of RAM here. I've got a reasonable N386 slash 486 chip in this machine, it's got to run Doom, right? Doom started up, I could even get to the main menu, but then the whole thing fell apart. I couldn't use the keyboard, it, like, it just literally didn't work. And I went on to VC Fed, and it's a, it's a real thing. Like People can't get Doom to work because the keyboard input doesn't work. And that's not just a Doom thing, that's a few things that read the interrupt handler for the keyboard, the scan code for the keyboard. Now, this is a known thing. Uh, Jim Leonard, trickster to some, uh, had written about this as far back as 2008. and said, hey, look, reading the scan code from port 60H on ATs and later, that's the, sc the scan code. I think that's the scan code. Maybe I'm round the wrong way. But anyway, scan code 60H, um, that's what we look for on the, the keyboard, for the keyboard input um, at the BIOS level. But then um, there's also the need for interrupt 61. And Frenkel S, this, this guy here, knew about this. And he's also been involved in a lot of um, Doom-based ports over the days. Uh, you can check out his, his GitHub um, automatically. I like what he's doing because, you know, he's got um, Doom being ported to the Atari ST. He's got Doom for Elks, Wolfenstein 3D for the Mac, but ported back to, to DOS. He's got Doom for the 8088. You know, there's a lot of cool things here. So Frankel S saw this video and thought, you know what, Al sounds like um, he needs some help here. And that's the wonderful thing about YouTube and the community and people watching and people subscribing to the channel. So if you're not subscribed to this channel and you like this sort of stuff, definitely subscribe. So Frankel S saw my plight at the end of the video and said, you know what, I think I can fix this. And so within mere days of my video coming out, he said, look, you can put a 486 CPU in an XT and run Doom, according to this video by Al's Geek Lab, but you can't use the keyboard. A few lines of code fixes that problem because he knew about Trickster's plight over here. Basically, this, this problem here, the scan codes um, being different for an XT versus an AT. So he patched up the code, and this is all it is. It is literally... Four lines of code. Uh, define the, um, the variable and then look at um, 61H. So we look here, 61H, right? 61. Uh, so does it work? And he said that he had got it working in DOSBox, which is not true hardware. So it's not a full test of the actual, you know, what's this, what's this all about? You've got to test it on the tin. Hasn't tested it on a real XT 
with at least a real XT with a 486 CPU. We're going to use as much of real Doom as we possibly can with using Fast Doom. Fast Doom, if you've never heard of it, is basically a port of pretty much vanilla Doom. It is the real thing. It's proper Doom. It's got some uh, modifications in it to run optimally. Um, so check that out. If you've never seen um, Viti95 Fast Doom, just check it out. Um, Fast Doom did start on the, the XT Cam 486, but it did not work with the keyboard. What we're seeing here is a very minor change by um, Frankel S, and he was kind enough to not only release the source code uh, with this change, but also the binaries in that zip file so you can grab it now but what we are going to do is for the first time potentially ever because there's lots of other people on um, VC fed and so forth uh, saying that they've never got this working so potentially for the first time ever we're going to get doom working on a real XT but with a 486 Intel in board so, so it's pretty niche but anyway we are going to get this working, hopefully, today. So cross your fingers and come with me as I switch on the old chunker and see if we can get Doom working. Here's the XT without its, um, its lid on, um, but it's still very much an XT, albeit with the Intel inboard um, 386 come 486 chip in it. All right, here goes, switching on now. It's hooked up to this VGA monitor. I shall fast forward here to save the trouble of you guys watching the uh, post process. Just to clearly show I'm on an old XT keyboard with the function keys down the side. Let's, uh, let's launch F Doom together. Here goes nothing. Before we move on with the video, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to PCB Way for supporting Al's Geek Lab. Whether you're recreating a vintage motherboard or testing a fresh microcontroller idea, PCB Way will turn your Gerber files into polished boards in just a few days. Pick your solder mask color, add silkscreen, and if you like, let their team handle full component assembly so it arrives ready to boot. And guess what? You can get started from just $5. And if you need more than just PCBs, they also offer CNC machining, 3D printing, and sheet metal work, all from the same dashboard. Visit their website today at PCBWay.com. We'd like to thank PCBWay for keeping our projects powered. Now, let's get back to the video. We have Doom. Now, I have gotten here before. This is not a... Uh... This is not the first time I've seen Doom running on this machine, but uh, it would be the first time playing Doom. So let's have a look, see. Um, obviously the settings are pretty low because uh, this is on a slow machine. But I just go to new game. And this has worked before as well. It's when you get into the main game loop that the problem exists. Here we go. I'm getting 12 frames a second. And look at that. I'm now playing Doom on an XT keyboard. How good is that? Amazing. Um, so the setting there is a potato setting. <laughs> One of the, uh, the good advantages of having um, fast Doom is that there are a number of options you can have. So I'm gonna switch over to uh, full screen and show you um, what Doom looks like in potato mode, low detail and high detail on this CPU. And then hopefully by next time's video, we can see it in a bit more detail. Okay, so this is um, Doom at full high quality here. And as you can see, absolute slideshow. I mean, what did you expect? I mean, this is like, Basically a 386 processor running on uh, an 8-bit bus, not, not even a 16-bit bus. Uh, a really old 
uh, VGA card, so not even a decent SVGA, it's just like a, I don't even know what it is, it's like a, some sort of basic ATI card. And you can see like we're getting two frames a second. But bear with me, if I go to options, and this is a great thing about Potato, um, sorry not Potato Doom, <laughs> Fast Doom. The thing about Fast Doom is it's got loads more options to sort of change and play around with to get things. So if you can go to um, change the level detail, you can go to low there. And we mess about with that, we can see that, yeah, okay, not much improvement, we're getting four frames a second. Obviously, if we take down the screen size, maybe a bit to something like that, not quite a postage stamp, but already a couple more frames per second. And, you know, it's, it's a bit more playable. Not not terrible, not great, but, you know, okay, we're, we, we still know it's Doom and, you know, stuff. Okay, so let's put it down to um, potato mode. Uh, which is really cool because um, this obviously was not a function of, of the original Doom. And again, it's just a bit more chonky. Um, but now we're getting 11, 12 frames per second. And yeah, it doesn't look wonderful. But I'm starting to be in that position where the game is now at that point where I can run around and you know, start doing things. So if I go along here, let's see if we can kill some baddies. Now, um, because of where the keys are on the XT keyboard, it's uh, it's one of those weird things about the XT keyboard, the control and alt key, you know, obviously you strafe and fire and doom quite a lot. Um, the alt key is kind of just below the control key. So you get the control, then the shift, and then the alt, all in one line. So obviously when the AT keyboard came out, that changed. in the XT keyboard, it's quite difficult to press the control and alt key at the same time to strafe. <laughs> so, you know, it, we're definitely not thinking about XTs at all. I mean, why would they? I mean, most XTs didn't even have a VGA. Um, but, you know, look, here I am, shooting down zombies, playing away, which is really cool. Um, the fact that I'm doing this on a machine that was made in... Well, if it, we're talking about the PC, which is doable, we could we could say the PC. Um, this is made in 1981. Uh, PCs that came out to play Doom were probably 1992, 93 at the best. So this is at least a decade before Doom even came out. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, absolutely wonderful that we've got our machine. Uh, this thanks to Frank OS and obviously all the people who have been involved in uh, Fast Doom as well. Just absolutely awesome. Just really, really cool. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite happily playing this at you know 17, 15 frames a, a second. Not, it's not beautiful, but hopefully that upgrade, that CPU upgrades, will make this a little bit better. Maybe we could even play it on low quality. But, you know, you can still work out what's going on here. You can still play the game. Um, everything else I've ever seen running on an XT, apart from probably, um, there is a port called Real Doom and there is a port called, uh, by Frank OS, I think, um, Doom 8088, where you can actually run this. But it's a totally different experience. Um, I'll just show you what I mean. So, in this fast zoom, you can switch off certain things in display. You can go into uh, like wall rendering and you can switch it to flat. So you're basically just getting rid of all those textures. And that does a bit for performance, as you can probably see. Um, let's go to an area where you can't see the. Yeah, so in here, got a little bit more performance, but it's incredibly dull, right? Uh, it's not much fun. So you can change all of these settings to make it um, more palatable for your particular machine. Um, so for example, bus speed, I'm not going to put it as fast because um, we've got an 8-bit bus here. It's not a fast machine at all. You can also change the type of CPU renderer so it gets an expectation of how fast your machine is. Um, so 386 DLC is actually probably more like it than the um, 486 
that we have just based on the fact that we're running on uh, an XT. But, you know, again, running up to about 16 frames per second there, coming around this small, undetailed corridor. So do you know of anybody who's ever had Doom working on an XT before or a, you know, PC? If you know of anybody, I'd love to chat to them. But it's so cool to see this. Really, really, uh, it's my sort of, <laughs> this is my sort of thing. And of course, if you've never heard of Fast Tomb before, then you won't be aware that it also has Hercules Monochrome, uh, MDA, uh, CGA, which you're looking at right here in all of its four color, the brown, brownish palette. Uh, but yeah, four color CGA here is playable and ish. <laughs> And of course, um, EGA as well, 16 color EGA. So you're seeing the EGA here at this point in time. What I did find quite interesting is both the CGA and the EGA um, versions were actually slower in um, rendering the graphics than the VGA version. Now, I'm assuming this is because it's doing some sort of interpretation, it kind of down samples or something, and it's doing that on the fly. Um, I think it's J.H. Howard, he has a Wolfenstein CGA port uh, and it was made for XTs, I, I featured that on the channel some years back now, but uh, what he does is he's actually got a little script that he, you run on Wolfenstein's VGA textures before the, um, the game actually launches and what it does is it takes all those VGA 256 color textures and then converts them, dithers them into CGA. This one doesn't do that. This this game does not do that. It's basically taking what I assume is the VGA colors and then changing them frame by frame on the fly or, or something like that. But anyway, CGA, EGA, Hercules Monochrome and, wait for it, text mode. And there's different uh, resolutions of text mode, but basically uh, what you're seeing here is the standard 80 by 25 resolution screen mode. Um, so this is 16 colors, obviously. It's using the standard ANSI palette. So this is, you know, characters, but obviously the extended IBM character set to show you all the ANSI characters, the blocks, you know, um, all that sort of stuff. Amazing that you can still make out anything, but when you actually put it up into high detail, the frame rate is still reasonable. And more importantly, uh, the game is, it's still Doom, but in text mode. It's unfreaking believable. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Just something extra to throw at you because, it, well, it looks cool. So that's Doom from id Software, coming to you on an XT sometime soon. Anyway, thanks very much to Frankel S on GitHub for first of all watching my videos and then obviously making the patch that was required to make it run on a good old XT. Uh, I'm super pumped about that, as you can probably tell, and I can't wait to upgrade the CPU in this machine yet again on that inboard to see exactly the performance of whether it actually makes much of a difference or whether it's just slow, 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 as you've kind of seen here. It's fun to play, but only for a while. So anyway, if you like this sort of stuff, then please subscribe to the channel, give it a good old thumbs up, leave a comment below as well. I'd love to hear from you. And if you want to support me in buying extra things to make things go faster or to do things that they never had any intention in doing, then why don't you head over to Patreon? Just like these lovely supporters have done themselves. Patreon.com forward slash Lab. Anyway, that's all for today's video. Hopefully you'll catch me next week where I have more shenanigans of this description coming along for your viewing pleasure. Until then, have a great time, have a great week, and be excellent to each other. Bye for now.